The Benin sculptures are fascinating enough in isolation. But when you put them together in a museum, you add a whole new layer of meaning. The French know better than most what a difference a display can make. In the late 20th century, their museums were split by a fierce debate. It would question the very nature of non-Western objects like these. As the new millennium dawned, Paris awaited the arrival of a new museum. It was located in a prime position in central Paris. It was designed by one of France's top architects, Jean Nouvel. And the project certainly had friends in high places. Jacques Chirac, the former president of France, uh, happens to be a an amateur of what used to be called in unregenerate times primitive art. Uh, and he's actually very knowledgeable about certain, certain domains. At the time, non-Western objects were housed in museums like this. They were the territory of anthropologists and ethnographers. They were seen as scientific evidence, which provided an insight into the culture that made them. But by the time this collection was filmed, anthropological museums were already in trouble. It so happens that the French museums with ethno large ethnographic collections, essentially the Musée de l'Homme and the Musée des Arts Océaniens et Africains, uh, were somewhat uh, deserted by the public. Nobody really knew much what to do with these collections anymore. Jacques Chirac wanted to bring all of France's collections of works from other civilizations together. The idea was to create a brand new cultural institution. The main aim is to uh, exhibit and interest people in cultural diversity. Now, the way the museum does this is by using visually spectacular objects to try and capture people's attention and draw them into the complexities raised by issues of diversity. Jacques Chirac had high aspirations to combat Western ethnocentrism, to hold collections in trust for all mankind, and to contribute to positive dialogue between cultures and civilizations. But first, they had to grapple with the issue of display. Gone were the crowded glass cabinets of the ethnographers and anthropologists. These unashamedly visual displays owed more to the traditions of art historians. It's true that the amalgamation of the anthropological collections under a single roof did create considerable controversy. Uh, at the time, uh, particularly with the anthropological community. Um, the anthropologists in France were worried by the idea that uh, their cherished objects were being captured by art historians and that all these objects would simply be shown as art rather than as exemplars or testimonies of cultural diversity. This sculpture is the head of a Benin king. To an art historian, it's a piece of historical evidence. It's also an aesthetic object to be appreciated in and of itself. But to an anthropologist, it's an artifact which is valuable because it sheds light on another culture and a different way of life. What troubled them probably was also the idea that they no longer held a monopoly of discourse over these objects. And uh, obviously, for understandable reasons, I felt this myself at a time as an anthropologist. It's a bit painful to be uh, deprived of the right to have the final word on all these objects. The museum, Quai Branly, opened in 2006. Its bold architecture was calculated to attract attention. But it was what lay inside the building that was under the closest scrutiny. This uh, uh, option uh, of exhibition does, to a certain extent, lay the museum open to accusations of aestheticizing and othering 
cultures, but it's a risk we're willing to assume in a sense because objects that we tend to categorize as art are a good way of drawing people into uh, uh, other ways of conceiving the world. In 2007, a major Benin exhibition came to Quai Branly. The exhibition had first been shown in Vienna, where it was designed and displayed in an anthropological museum. Lorsque nous nous avons conçu l'exposition à, à, à Paris, et nous l'avons reprise de l'exposition de Vienne avec la, la structure qu'avaient fait la, les commissaires à, 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 à Vienne en, en Autriche. Donc, nous, étant donné que nous reprenions cette exposition, nous reprenions le concept de cette exposition, on ne l'a pas changé. But these visitors in Paris are seeing a different display from their counterparts in Vienna. And the way the exhibition was adapted gives a good idea of Quai Branly's approach to display. Moi, j'ai désiré, en tant que commissaire à Paris, euh, j'ai désiré mettre particulièrement en valeur une des, des productions tout à fait étonnantes de, de l'art du royaume de Bénin, qui sont ces, ces plaques. Running down the left-hand side of the exhibition is a collection of bronze plaques. Ces plaques en bronze, elles sont, elles sont tout à fait étonnantes à différents niveaux parce que d'abord, ce sont des, des, des formes d'œuvres qui sont tout à fait uniques en Afrique où on ne pratique pas ce genre de, de, de bas-relief. That's an artistic point. But the plaques also contain anthropological information. Ces plaques font l'apologie de de l'Oba, mais aussi de ses dignitaires, d'un certain nombre de, de rituels, d'un certain nombre d'actions qui sont véritablement une archive euh, historique de, qui vient se superposer, s'additionner à l'archive euh, orale, puisqu'il n'y a pas d'écriture. In Paris, the plaques are given a special status by the design of the exhibition itself. J'ai voulu qu'elles se succèdent et qu'elle crée une sorte de colonne vertébrale dans l'exposition qui soit en relation avec les thèmes qui avaient été choisis par Vienne. Facing the line of plaques are the themed collections of other exhibits. These items complement what you can see in the plaques themselves. This plaque shows three African traders. They're holding manilas, the currency that was used for trade with Europe. The next plaque along shows their Portuguese trading partners, and they're not short of a manila or two. But look to the right-hand side of the exhibition and you'll see real manilas. This cross-referencing bridges the gap between art and anthropology. On a pas choisi une exposition qui soit anthropologique ou esthétique ou, ou artistique parce que je crois que, et ça c'était aussi une des grandes euh, politiques du, du musée du Quai Branly, c'est de pouvoir euh, avoir euh, des approches euh, complémentaires. But some observers believe the art historians have the upper hand. This salt cellar is presented as an object to be admired, not just explained. It's been given an aesthetic value that reaches beyond its historical context. This Queen Mother's head is displayed as a sculpture. The lighting is from two different angles to enhance the three-dimensional effect. The display sends out strong messages about the artistic quality of the piece. On peut faire semblant d'être ennuyeux et rébarbatif et on peut aussi essayer de donner du plaisir parce que les couleurs sont agréables, les éclairages sont agréables. Euh, on essaye de donner un confort maximum. Ça peut vous donner l'impression d'une galerie d'art. L'important, c'est que l'information euh, scientifique, elle soit aussi présente. So this could be one legacy of the anthropologist's approach. Information about the Benin culture is used to structure the exhibition. But to some critics, even that doesn't go far enough. This leopard can be seen as a piece of art. But originally, 
it was used for carrying water. Seeing it purely as a sculpture could strip it of its meaning within the culture where it was created. Or, you see that, for example, at each object, you have quand même un ensemble de six à sept lignes qui est qui donne des informations précises sur sur chacun des sur chacun des objets. Et mais que cette information soit pas en en très gros, mais soit disponible et laisse au, au regard le, le plaisir de, de pouvoir regarder des, des formes et de pouvoir les admirer, je pense qu'il y a un équilibre possible entre les deux. Capronly believe that their deliberately spectacular approach is beating off the critics, that they're bringing in large audiences, stimulating debate, and challenging the public to question their assumptions about their own culture. People are not used to seeing their cultural patrimony exhibited in ways in which it's valued, uh, made uh, uh, sort of uh, made to appear as really valuable works of art and so on, which they are. On a quand même une culture africaine, et cette culture africaine, elle se met au même niveau, elle est au même niveau que certaines euh, que certains arts de certains certaines cours européennes 16e, 17e, elle a la même puissance et euh, c'est là où je veux dire que on peut tout à fait relativiser ce qui s'est passé en Europe. Many French still assume that they have this vision of African cultures as essentially tribal, relatively unhierarchical, relatively without centralized power and so showing Benin is a good way also of rectifying or correcting this uh, skewed view of African cultures in the, in the French public. But beyond France, a wider debate was raging. It was playing out in countries all over Europe, including Britain. This debate swings the emphasis back towards cultural context and questions whether objects like these should be in Western hands at all. Thank <laughs> you.